What is up, gang? We are back with yet another tier list, and this time around, we are going to be discussing the best breakfast foods to have for today's tier list. And oh man, we have quite a lot to talk about today. Now, what exactly are the terms of this? Like, couldn't any food be considered a breakfast food? Like if I got up at seven in the morning and decided I wanted some prime rib or some lobster in the morning, wouldn't that make it a breakfast food? Sleepy Joe, shut up because you're trying to raise a stupid point because you know damn well that prime rib and lobster would be a heavy meal for the morning and you know exactly what breakfast foods are what. Oh, so you'll get on me for saying prime rib and lobster are heavy for the morning, but then you'll have some people literally eat biscuits and gravy first thing in the morning, but God forbid a man wants prime rib. Joe, that sounds absolutely atrocious to have in the morning. And uh, you know that Donald has a point in all this, but enough stalling because this list is pretty large and I'd rather start it now rather than later. So up first we got apple juice and this is kind of whatever. So I give it a B tier, like it's not orange juice, which is preferred quite honestly. Then we got a banana, and that is a sorry ass hell breakfast if you got one singular banana. Like imagine you're at the office and everyone has a nice lunch planned and you just whip out the banana and that's it. I still like bananas, so it merits a B tier for me. Oh, believe me, I whip out the banana a lot of times in the White House. The staff has gotten quite accustomed to it at this point. Uh, I really hope we're still talking about actual bananas here rather than what I think it actually is. I pray for those poor attendants in the White House. Anyways, after that, we got our first S tier, and that is the breakfast burrito. It is quite perfect because you get a multitude of flavors and carbs from the tortilla. I am a huge fan of them, and when McDonald's has breakfast, I make sure to snag me one or two to have. Dude, if you want to know a life hack, then I want everyone to order McDonald's and order a sausage burrito and ask for either strawberry or grape jelly, whichever one you prefer, and then pour some on your burrito and enjoy a true breakfast burrito. I know it sounds weird, but you all have to trust me on this life hack. It does sound weird, but trust me, Donald, that not a single soul will doubt your food-related life hacks because of how much of an elite eater you are. Anyways, following that, we got rice. And I have had rice in the mornings alongside some sunny side eggs, and it is actually pretty good. It basically replaces whatever carb you have, and while I would prefer something like potatoes, I still think this is pretty good and give it an A tier. The same would go for coffee. Now, I don't really have coffee religiously, but I know some people go apeshit for this stuff and cannot function without it, which is why I am still giving it an A tier. Some people literally just have cigarettes and coffee for breakfast, and that is insane to me. Following that, we got some pastries, and pairing a pastry with coffee or just having it with some milk is great, and I think they, quite frankly, also belong in A tier. Ooh, same cannot be said for the next entry, because donuts are an automatic S tier. I freaking love donuts, and honestly, for a breakfast item, I know they slap no matter what. Get me a simple glazed donut from Krispy Kreme and I will be a happy man for the whole morning. Uh, I hate to be that guy, but uh, don't donuts technically count as a pastry? Listen here, Joe, I know you actually love being that guy, and also if the list doesn't count it as the same thing, then I will not either. After that, we got an English muffin, and if you're just eating that by itself, then you must be some kind of monster because a plain English muffin is insane, and I will be giving it a C tier. Oh my God, but up next, we got something amazing, and that is French toast. This is an instant S tier, because I will be drowning my French toast with powdered sugar and different types of syrups. This is like a personal favorite of mine to have, because I just love French toast. So some heavy personal bias is coming here. Then we got two back-to-back -back D tiers, because who the hell likes fruit salad and grits in the morning? Like, I get it, you want to be healthy, but you're telling me that you would rather have these two over any of the other items above. Maybe the English muffin, actually, but still, I will not be having either of these in the morning unless Michelle makes me eat healthy. Then, after we got some ham, and this goes into an instant A tier, whenever I get some French toast, I have to have some eggs and ham on the side just to really ensure my breakfast is great. Then we got another C tier and a hard-boiled egg, because honestly, if you have no time and just get a bunch of hard-boiled eggs with some hot sauce, that can be a decent breakfast. Like, it won't be amazing, but you cannot be expecting too much from boiled eggs. Speaking of hot sauce, everyone make sure to check out our hot sauce tier list because we made one of the best lists out there. Some would say it's because I made the list. Some would argue that it was a good list despite you making it. After that, we got hash browns, and this is an instant S tier. Like, I don't get how you would argue otherwise because these are like a breakfast staple. 
The next one though is just too hipster for me. Like you gotta be some vegan Californian to want avocado toast for breakfast. And now admittedly, it is actually good, but it gets a bad rep because of the hipsters. Then we got bacon and you have to be a hardcore hater to not place this in S tier. That or you just don't eat pork, I guess. Either way, I do eat pork, so it is an S tier for me. Then I got crepes going into A tier because a good crepe as a dessert after your nice breakfast can be extremely rewarding. I don't know about having just the crepes, but hey to each their own. Following that, we got some croissants and I personally prefer bagels if I'm being quite honest, which speaking of, I got bagels going into A tier. A good New York City bagel will change your perspective on bagels forever. What if I don't want to go to New York? The rats there are huge and quite honestly, they kind of scare me. Joe, stop being a pussy. I wouldn't use that word exactly, but Donald kind of has a point, Joe. Anyways, after that, we got some banana bread, and whilst it does slap as a dessert sometimes, I just can't imagine having them. As your only breakfast item, like this gets a D tier from me. Biscuits, though, get a solid B from me because a nice buttered up biscuit is a nice thing to have every now and then, but I don't really get breakfast vibes unless it's in sausage and gravy. Potatoes, though, get an S tier from me, having these alongside some eggs slap. Just like our next entry, which is the breakfast sandwich, and whoever labeled this spelt it incorrectly. But nonetheless, it is still an A tier for me. And you would think that our next entry merits an A tier, but quite honestly, and everyone in the comments can get angry at me, but I think cereal for breakfast is kind of mid. It gets a B tier for being easy to make, but wouldn't you rather have something else, like something more filling, or is that just me? You're sounding like Donald over there, saying that cereal won't fill you and that you'd probably want to eat something after having some cereal. Joe, cereal actually does not fill you up. That's like a snack or something light because you have no time to make something else. After that, though, we got some chicken and waffles. And while I do think this is great, I also think that this is a bit too heavy for breakfast, too much grease, but still deserving of an A tier. Cinnamon rolls are a bit too sugary for me. And I think I will be giving that a C tier. Then after we got muffins, and I actually am a fan of muffins and prefer them to the ultra sugary cinnamon rolls, and we'll be placing these into B tier. Oatmeal gets a D tier from me though. You have to be an old man like Joe here to genuinely enjoy some morning oatmeal. An omelet though is a different story because a well-cooked omelet will be amazing and deserves an S tier. Honestly, the two items after that also deserve an S tier because eggs over easy are amazing as hell and a fresh glass of orange juice in the morning is probably like a top 10 thing to ever exist. Like it sounds like such an amazing way to start the morning and both deserve S tier. Did you guys know that if you drink orange juice immediately after brushing your teeth, then it tastes just like Sunny D? That cannot possibly be healthy for your teeth. It would explain some of Joe's dental issues. After that, though we got chocolate bread, I don't know why it's in French, but either way, this is a solid B tier. Then, of course, we got pancakes, and you guys already know that it's an instant S tier. I don't even need to explain it. Following that, we got a parfait and some Pop-Tarts, both going into C tier. Now, many of you probably agree with the parfait one, but let me explain the Pop-Tart one. While I do enjoy this a lot and have eaten them for breakfast, I just feel like in the grand scheme of things, this is just a quick bite rather than an actual meal, so it's just kind of there if I need it, but I won't go out of my way for it. As for quiches, well, I'm a fan of them and have to place them in B tier. Raisin bread, though, is gross and gets a D tier from me. Now, what the heck is wrong with raisin bread? Joe, shut the hell up. You know yourself that you don't like raisin bread. You don't know what I like. Well, even if you did like that, I honestly wouldn't be surprised, but the rating stays. After that, we have, in my opinion, the best meat for breakfast, and that is sausages. This is an S tier in my book. I freaking love sausages. Oh, I love me some sausage too, huh? Weird, Joe, but yeah, then after we got scones, and that's a solid B in my book. Then we got another S tier, and that is scrambled eggs. This with some ketchup or Cholula hot sauce goes absolutely nuts. After that, smoothies get a B tier from me, and strudels get a C tier. Like, I would rather have a toaster strudel instead, but I'll get to that rating when we get to it. After that, we got tea, and this is an A tier. Shout out British people, because some tea with a sweet pastry goes absolutely hard. Then after we got toast, which is getting an S tier because it's simple yet extremely effective. I appreciate toast. How the hell does toast get an S tier? It just does because I want it to. A nice slice of toast with either jam or butter should not go as hard as it does, but it is absolutely amazing. 
Wrapping up our list, our final three entries are toaster strudels, waffles, and yogurt. Toaster strudels get a B tier from me whilst waffles are an automatic S tier. Get a good, nice, crunchy waffle and I will go apeshit. Meanwhile, yogurt in the morning is all right. It gets a B tier from me. Pretty solid list, but uh, you're missing something. And what is that, Joe? Some prime rib. Shut the hell up, Joe. What is up, gang? Today, we're going to be making another tier list. And this time around, we're going to be doing a sandwich place tier list. And I will not lie, it was hard as hell to think of all these sandwich places. Like, there aren't a lot of sandwich places. So if we missed one, please do let us know, because it was tough finding or even thinking of some off the top of our head. I can tell because there's a freaking house on this tier list. What the heck is that about? Well, obviously, it's a sandwich from home and not from a shop. Again, it's a sandwich place tier list and not a sandwich shop tier list. Couldn't I make a sandwich at work or in the park? Would that then make it a sandwich place? Joe, don't start this again like when you kept yapping about having prime rib for breakfast during our breakfast food tier list. I am actually on Donald's side for this. Joe, please stop being so annoying. I'll pipe down, but just know that the Joe heads will not be pleased because you are silencing the truth speaker. Remember to question everything society throws at you and never believe anything the media says. Joe, the fake news bit is mine. Don't go stealing my ideas or I'm gonna have to go off on you on my social media platform. Acting like you don't do that already, I've seen your mean tweets. Yeah, you're right, I'll probably do it anyways after this list. Anyway, speaking of the list, let's actually please, for the love of Christ, get this started. Up first, we got Subway, and listen, I have very strong opinions on Subway, and they are not good ones. Like, if you're starving and have absolutely no other options, then I would understand. But like, going out of your way for some Subway is crazy. I ordered some like a month or two ago, and they gave me some soggy-ass gross lettuce sandwich and had the nerve to charge me around 15 bucks for it. Like, who the hell does Subway think they are charging absurd prices for the most mediocre food to ever exist? I ultimately give it a C tier for being the king of mid, and quite honestly, it just is not that good, and I will proudly stand by it. I will admit, though, that they do have some banging cookies, and I think that raises their grade higher than it honestly should be because the sandwiches are just not that good. Why are we giving it a better ranking for having good cookies? This is a sandwich tier list and not a cookie tier list. I don't care if their macadamia nut cookies are amazing. Joe, it's my list, so shut up. I will rank it a C tier, and that is final. God, the nerve of that guy. But anyways, after that, we got sandwiches from home, and you all already know these are banging. I'm still only going to give it a B tier because we all know that having a sandwich made for you is still superior. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but having someone else make a sandwich for you is just better because you don't have to expend any effort at all in making it. Like, the thought of getting up and lathering two pieces of bread and layering it with whatever I want just seems boring and tiresome. But when you go to a sandwich shop and you just see people assembling whatever the hell you ordered, just feels great and enhances the flavor. Donald, that's just called being lazy as hell. And quite honestly, it really is not that hard to make a sandwich. Like what you just said was nothing earth shattering. Like you literally just complained about getting up and putting mayo on two slices of bread. After that, you just put cheese or whatever meat you want and maybe some spinach and boom, you're literally done. The process could be accomplished in under five minutes. Nah, there's some actual science behind the fact that sandwiches taste better when you aren't the one making them yourself. Like the same applies when you're at home and someone brings you a sandwich, like your brain releases endorphins that help with your happiness and gives you more dopamine. Are you for real right now? I didn't know that. Nah, I'm lying, but the fact that you trusted me immediately goes to show how easily the American people can be fooled and does not give me hope for people with low media literacy. If I say that I can poop gold, would you believe that too? Okay, those two are not the same at all. That is an unfair comparison. I would believe it if you pooped gold. That sounds cool. Joe, you pissed me off so much. Anyways, moving on with our tier list, we got Jimmy John's, and I like Jimmy John's, but quite honestly, their sandwiches aren't quite up to snuff. I don't enjoy their freaky fast delivery because I would rather just pick up my food. I think a solid B tier is okay for them because they aren't doing anything extraordinary in the sandwich making field. But I will be the first to admit that if a gun were pointed at my head 10 times out of 10, I would be choosing Jimmy John's over Subway any day of the week because that is just how much I freaking despise Subway. I think I would rather eat a rubber shoe than ever eat Subway again. Man, this Subway hate is real. What would you rather have Donald a McRib or a sub from Subway? Hmm, uh, I honestly could not answer that question. And the fact that I can't actually is quite concerning. I think I'd leave it to a coin flip, but anyways, after that, 
We got Panera Bread, and I am also giving this a B tier. I also like their sandwiches, but again, it's nothing amazing, to be honest. Like, everything left in this list beats out Panera, and I don't think it is deserving of anything higher than a B. The Panera Bread lover can crucify me, but I stand by my goddamn word. After that, though, we got a really good sandwich place, and I visit this place whenever I can, but the problem is that it is never near me. But whenever it's on the way, I make sure to get something, and that is Potbelly. I really like Potbelly, and maybe if I have had it more, it would go higher. But the few times that I've had it, I can tell you all that it has been great experiences every single time. I think this merits a solid A tier in my book. See, I disagree with this. I have not had Potbelly since an incident that occurred to me over three years ago. I was eating some Potbelly, and I went to watch this one Star Wars movie. I forgot which one, so don't ask me. Actually, uh, it may have been Rouge One, but either way, that doesn't matter because I don't know if I got a stomach virus or if Potbelly poisoned me, but I had severe stomach pain when watching the movie. And I had to shit so bad, but I did not want to miss, so what did old Joe do? I'll tell you what I did. I held it in with cold sweats, constantly coming and going whilst grabbing my tummy as if I were hanging on for my dear life, but it did not help one bit. Towards the end, I hit my breaking point and I had to erupt. My chocolate starfish could not hold back the incoming fudge wave that was coming, and I sprinted to the bathroom, but whilst I was running, I had little sharts along the way. And when I went to the bathroom stall, I examined the damage, and it was quite severe. My white undies had a nice caramel hue, and I had to abandon my precious cargo, and I smelled too much to return to the theater. But once I thought it was okay, I then suddenly fell to my knees in the parking lot and realized the sandwich had not finished. It's rampage in my inner sanctum, and I projectile vomited all over the grass and could not stop. I've never felt the presence of a higher being until that day because I was shown how utterly defenseless and human I was when I had both ends of my holes just evacuating as if they were on the plane during 9-11. I then had a very sad drive home, and honestly, I have not had pot belly since then. Dude, what the fuck? Jesus Christ, man, that is fucking hilarious. It actually made me like pot belly some more. But anyways, after that whole long fiasco, we got Jersey Mike subs, and I also really like this sub place. My favorite thing from here is the tuna sub because they just know how to make it here. So I am thinking we also place this place into A tier. After that, we got our first S tier, and that, of course, is Mr. Sub. And I hate giving it this high of a rating because it originated in Canada, but goddamn if I don't love me some Mr. Sub because this is one of the best places for some sandwiches, and they have some amazing freaking cheese fries here. They are absolutely to twerk for, and I am a frequent Mr. Sub visitor. Again, why are we rating stuff based on things other than their sandwiches? Because I'm the one making this list, and if you go to a place with variety, then it'll be good for the people who don't want to eat sandwiches. Following that amazing choice, we got another good sandwich place, and that is Schlotzky's. God, with a name like that, you'd think that it would run out of business, but surprisingly, they are thriving. And I will even say that they have some of the better sandwiches on this list. Like, out of all the A-tier selections, I personally would prefer Schlotzky's to everything else there. If you all have not gone to Schlotzky's yet, I would heavily recommend it, and they are also like all around the U.S., so you should be good on finding one nearby. W placement here. I'd maybe argue that it could go into S-tier because they're French dip sandwich because it has roast beef, two cheeses, caramelized onions, and it's all served on a sourdough bun. If that doesn't sound appetizing to you, then I don't know what will make your mouth water because I am a huge fan of roast beef. I'm a fan of roast beef, but uh, not the meat if you're catching what I'm throwing down. Some good old fashioned beef curtains, Joe? Oh man, you're a dirty, dirty dog. But yeah, it is good berry, but it stays in A tier because our next and final entry will be taking the coveted S tier spot. I love Firehouse subs and I love their hot subs so much. The sweet and spicy meatball sub is to die for. And if you're not in the mood for some meatballs, you can go ahead and order some spicy Cajun chicken all in your sub. And if you want to make some monstrosity unknown to man and just create the best sub you ever imagined, then you absolutely could do that. This place has had some of the best service every time I go, and they are even offering pulled pork sandwiches right now with coleslaw inside. And you all already know the Don fucks with some good coleslaw. So all in all, I would implore you all to go to this place whenever you're craving some sandwiches. Man, it sounds like you would jump on a grenade for this place. 
I respect your level of dedication to this place. I won't go as far as to say you're glazing because quite honestly, I feel like you have really good recommendations because as I always say, Donald, you're an elite eater and I will forever respect that about you. Okay, what the heck? So you're gonna sit here and praise Donald for that BS, but all of a sudden when the Joe dog is a diehard fan of something, it's the end of the world and Joe over here is the worst human being alive and should be crucified in front of a live studio and be streamed to millions worldwide. Exactly, I'm glad you get the memo, Joe. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list, and this is technically the first tier list of 2024, and I am so glad that it is done by the best tier list maker. Well, technically, it's not our first tier list because in our top five videos, ranking technically counts as a list, and when we did, I got both top two rankings, so some in the fan base would argue that I am the best tier list president. That was a load of bull and was basically a make-a-wish event for your sped self, Joe. Now we move on to something real like a, uh, a potato tier list. Man, so we are starting off the year with this, and not only that, we are making me do another food-related list. You guys do realize that I can do much more than just eat. Yeah, we've seen the Epstein flight logs. Trust me, we do know you do a lot more than just eat. Okay, that is fake news, and let's get this potato list started, shall we? Because I do not want to talk or make a comment on that stuff. You'll have to talk to my lawyers, but uh, anyways, up first on this wonderful list, we got potato wedges, and I like a good potato wedge. Get that seasoned up and then add a little ketchup on it, and I am in for a good time. I think a solid A tier is in order for that. I really have nothing but good things to say about that, and the same would apply for our next entry because I have has browns going into S tier. Like these things are simply elite and I don't care how you eat them because you can crack your sunny side egg over them and let the yolk run on top of it. You can also add some hot sauce like Cholula or you can add some ketchup. This is just elite in any form or way that you eat it. Ooh, when I go to IHOP, I choose to pour a little bit of syrup on them because I don't mind a little sweet hash brown on the side. Is it elite in that way too? Joe, you're just saying that to piss me off because I know damn well no normal human being eats it like that. But then again, it is you who we're talking about, so I already know you are not normal. Now up next we, uh, well, I guess we have other forms of hash browns, huh? I guess I should have rated these with the other hash browns, but I want everyone to know that these all get an S tier as well. The same comments apply to them, even if made in other forms. After that, we got home fries, and this looks like homemade fries that were grilled up and seasoned well. And of course, you know that I am also placing this into A tier. These things are great if prepared well. The real question is, if you and your family actually prepare home-cooked fries well, or if they just do unseasoned potatoes. Barack, stop projecting your own problems onto me because I know damn well Michelle does not feed your family well enough with all of her low-calorie meals, and I bet her crazy ass thinks there are too many calories in seasonings. Anyways, after that, we got some latkes, and I've only had these a couple of times, but I can tell you all that they do indeed bang. I'd give it a solid A tier in terms of my enjoyment for it. And after that, we got three back-to-back-to-back -back -back S tiers. And first one is tater tots. And who doesn't like frying up some tots and eating them with some ketchup while chilling? They're good for snacks, and I won't judge you either if you order them instead of fries. Then, of course, we have normal potato chips and crinkle-cut chips. And as I said earlier, they both go into S tier. And quite honestly, I don't know the purpose of crinkle-cut chips. Ooh, I can answer this one. You see, crinkle cut chips aren't actually cut. They're made out of mashed potatoes of sorts. Instead, they're pressed or squirted out of a nozzle. Flat sliced chips are just that, slices of potatoes. The source material is just different. Wow, I didn't know that. Thanks, Joe. You really are informed when it comes to really random stuff that will not help almost anyone in knowing. Speak for yourself, Barry, because I did not ask Joe to go on his tism rant about potato chips, but I do have to agree that Joe is the king of useless knowledge. He's like a human fun fact book. But anyways, after that, we got tornado potatoes, or also known as potato twists. And these things are pretty solid. They are popular in South Korea, but merit a solid B tier in my eyes. After this, we got a goddamn raw potato, and I hate that the lowest I can go is C tier, but this belongs in goddamn F tier. If you eat raw potatoes like an apple, you need to be examined in a lab. Then we come back to greatness with our next entry, which is an S tier, and that is mashed potatoes. Goddamn, do I love mashed potatoes so much, and if you put some good ass gravy on top, well, you'll have the Don creaming. We really don't need to hear that about you, Donald, but to a certain extent, 
I get what you mean because I do love me some mashed potatoes. I love just getting globs of it in my mouth and trying to swallow the biggest gulp of mashed potato in my mouth. Joe, why do you have to ruin things for me? Like, I did not want to hear that. But whatever what's said is said, and the show must go on with this tier list. And up next, we got some scalloped potatoes. And I really only have these during Thanksgiving for the most part. Sometimes we do have some during Christmas, but most times out of 10, we are eating scalloped potatoes during Thanksgiving. And I actually like them during those times, but I won't really be asking for it other times of the year. I think a solid B tier is needed for this because it really is not anything special. And the same can be said about Hasselback potatoes because I also don't think they're anything special and also belong in B tier. I would rather have a baked potato, but we will get there when we get there. Then we got some potato soup, and I really love this stuff. I also like broccoli soup, and generally just like soups like these in general. Put some oyster crackers in there and you are set. I will have to give potato soup an A tier. Sounding like an old man with those takes right there, Donald. Joe, so help me God, I will kill you before you ever mutter words like that to me ever again. I just like good things, and this happens to be one of the best things to eat. Following that, we got some Nokis going into A tier. I really enjoy these, but I do not like them as much as our next entry, which will make all the Polish people happy because I am putting pierogies into S tier. Okay, this is some bull because pierogies are not made of potatoes. Joe, shut your mouth. You obviously have not had potato and cheese or even potato and meat pierogies, and those are the only ones I am grading, so I say they count. After that, we got some potato mochi, and I have never had that, so someone in the comments tell me if they're good. I assume it might be because I like mochi and potatoes, but something about that combo scares me. After that, we got some smashed potatoes, and this is like a fried potato disc, and this, of course, is going straight to A tier. You will not hear any complaints from the Don regarding this, but as for croquettes, the Don has had only mid experiences with them. Maybe I just haven't had the best place for them, but they are either too cheesy or not fried enough, and I have to give it a B tier. There's no such thing as too cheesy Donald. You should realize how much flavor an umami cheese gives to a dish. I do realize that, but I just have not had good ones. I am open to changing my mind, but until that day comes, this is staying in B tier. Following all that, we have potato salad, and this stuff merits a B tier as well. I like it, but again, it just is not all that when compared to the stuff above it. Speaking of stuff above it, I will be placing the baked potato into A tier above the potato salad, and what the hell is warm potato salad? That sounds awful, but I've never had it, so I can't judge, but this goes into the I have not had tier. Then we have the twice baked potato, and I honestly prefer the original baked potato, and we'll have this going into B tier. And since I'm already here, I may as well put roasted potatoes into B tier as well. Nothing special to say about them, but they're all right. This might be an L take from you, Donald. I love roasted potatoes so much, and I could have let an A tier slide, but a B tier man? Come on. Yeah, I know you of all people probably love roasted potatoes in the oven. Probably no sauce or seasoning because Michelle hates things that taste good. But here in my house, we have flavor. We can tell from all the weight you've gained recently. That is simply just me cultivating mass for an insane cut that I plan to have later this year. Speaking of, the things that help me cultivate the most mass are these next S tiers because I have French fries, curly fries, and waffle fries all going into S tier. Normal French fries are simply elite no matter what, but then you bump it up when you go to Arby's or Jack in the Box and get some curly fries from there, and then some nice ass waffle fries with some sauce is simply a combo to die for. I cannot express how insane these three are, but then you get like the run of the group, and this is like the Down Syndrome, brother, and that is steak cut fries. I have that going into B tier, but honestly, these are pretty bad. Like whatever place that serves, these always tends to not season them, and I don't know why. It's like they go out of their way to put almost no seasoning, and then you just get mushed flavorless potato. I really have disdain for steak cut fries. Well, at least you get something happy to rate. Those smiley fries will brighten up anyone's day. Joe, I don't care about these dumbass fries, but they are probably better than steak cut fries, and we'll be placing the smile fries into A tier. I have never seen these things before, nor do I know where to get them, but I have no doubt in my mind that they are better than steak cut fries. That's some big hater mindset right there, Donald. Nothing to be happy about in life. Man, those flight logs got our man depressed. What is going on, Gang A-Lang? Your presidential trio is back with another tier list, and this time around, we thought we'd throw it a bit back. You see, what started our channel's popularity was a chip tier list, so we thought, why not start the new year with a bang and go back to our roots a bit? So this time around, I'm once again doing the tier list, 
but this time it is strictly a hot chip tier list. I still think it's bull that I didn't do this list. This could have been a certified Donald banger if I had gotten my hands on it first. Donald, you have said it multiple times throughout a lot of our videos that you can't handle the spice levels in different foods. How are you supposed to rate all these hot chips if normal hot Cheetos make you cough up a storm and give you the hiccups? I'd survive through the power of the people and the Don is a soldier who can outlive any event. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you can do that, but guess what? I am the list maker and it is about time we get this bad boy started and up first we got hot Cheeto popcorn and these are like kind of puffy and don't really taste the best in my opinion. Like I think the whole puffy popcorn aspect of it ruins it for me and it just has an off tasting flavor if you guys have noticed. I'm not a big fan of them and would prefer the other Cheeto types that are on this list. Still though, despite all this hate I just gave it, I still don't think it belongs in D tier because I have something quite diabolical going down there and nothing else on this list tastes as bad as that thing that I will put there. So the Cheeto popcorn gets a C tier for me. Wow, all that hate, but you still put it in C tier and then you hype up one of these chips to be like absolute dog water. My money is on the hot Fritos that are gonna go into D tier for Joey. Remember how bad he was trashing normal Fritos last time? Put some respect on my name because I did the same for Fritos and put some respect on the honey barbecue twists and chili cheese flavors because those two are banging. Either way, we are not on that portion of the list so we will have to wait for me to denounce that one god awful hot chip but up next, we got Ruffles Flaming Hot, and this is a pretty good, but they aren't anything amazing in my opinion. I think a solid B tier is in order for this one. And quite frankly, these hot fries also belong there. Call me a biased Cheeto fan and tell me that they taste the same, but I don't care. I prefer the hot Cheeto hot fries over the Andy Cap hot fries, but don't get it twisted, everyone. I still very much so enjoy these and think they merit a B tier, just like the Flaming Hot Ruffles. What did you just say, uh, don't get it twisted, you have been hanging around Barack too much? That literally makes no sense because I never say that. When have you ever heard me say that throughout the entirety of our videography on this channel? It's just something innate. Joey picked it up by simply being in your presence. But I've been saying that since before I knew Barack. Oh, well, anyways, after that, we got some Doritos flaming hot chips, and I will admit that these are banging. I think this is our very first A tier of this list because these have just the right amount of spice and flavor and you all know how Doritos are. You suck and suck and lick and lick all over because they just have so much dust on a chip and then you chew. Please stop describing the chips that way, Joe. I don't like the way it all sounds. But it's true, that's what you have to do with a good ass Dorito before chewing on it. Same with Takis, to be honest. Just not with these next ones because I have Takis Nitro going into C tier. I don't really like these as much as the original, and I feel like they were just doing too much with this flavor. I will say, though, that they made those cheese Takis, and I am actually interested in how they taste. Have you guys ever had these? Because I feel like this wouldn't work, but I am also super curious. I have not had them. Neither have I. Surprised your fat ass hasn't had them. What the hell did you just call me? Your fat ass. As in, you are always hip and young with the fads and always seem to know what's up because you know Sleepy Joe here doesn't keep up with the times. But anyways, we've made it to that part of the list, guys. This is the bag of chips I absolutely despise. And I will be giving these Doritos ranch dipped hot wings flavor an absolute ass rating because these are stinkers. I was eating a small bag of these expecting some sort of greatness, but instead I got generational level stink in my mouth and I had to leave this bag half filled. For the life of me, I could not gulp this shit down, and old Joe knows that spitters are quitters. So you already know I felt a great deal of shame when I could not swallow these. I don't think they refer to food or chips when using that saying, Joe, you should uh, probably use that saying way less. Matter of fact, just stop using it at all. The Joe heads will not tolerate this slander. I will use anything and everything when it comes to me. After that, we got jalapeno cheddar Cheetos, and these things are also an A tier. Now I understand these are not spicy, but you guys have to understand that these things are delicious. And it does have some spice. I love these things and fully believe that they belong up there. After that, we got our first controversial take, I believe, and that is the flaming hot Cheetos with lime. And I am uh, placing these into B tier. I don't think they are better than the original hot Cheetos. And if you really want these bad boys with lime, then why don't you just grab the normal bag and just squeeze the lime in there yourself? That way you can add more or less depending on what you like. You know, Joe, usually you say some dumb stuff, but I actually think you were spitting just now. 
The Joe dog always spits when he speaks. Don't you worry. Following that, we got Doritos Flamas, and these are actually kind of underrated, I think, because these bang. If you had these, you know, they got the perfect blend of lime and spice. I think that these merit a solid A tier. And if you had not had them, I would highly recommend them. Now we can get on to what Donald was hating on the most, and that is the spicy Fritos. And I don't think they are that bad, but they definitely are not worth a try in my opinion. But if they are there, I'll still eat them. And I think with that description alone, we know that it is a C tier, very, uh, but man, oh man, we then got our first S tier. And that is of course the hot Cheeto fries. I was gassing them up earlier, so you all should have seen this coming, but man, oh man, are these things amazing. I love getting the $2 big bag and finishing the whole thing and then just feeling like the biggest pile of fat shit because I ate all of it. And then my stomach starts to go crazy in pain. Why don't you just not eat the whole thing and instead just ration it out and eat small portions throughout the day so that your stomach doesn't hurt? That sounds like pussy talk right there. I don't think I will be doing that, but don't worry because the hot Cheeto fry pain is nothing in comparison to the black label hot Cheeto pain. This will actually have my butthole burning in pain and I will be placing these in A tier. Now, even though they hurt me so very much, I love their flavor. And when I feel like hurting myself, I just open up one of these bad boys and have a dreadful time in the toilet later. And the spice will have me salivating a river's worth of saliva. That sounds absolutely terrible. And if that is your idea of a good time, then I would rather have a bad time. You just gotta enjoy the pain and torture that comes with something spicy, Donald, like it's a hurt so good type of pain. But yeah, following that, we actually have two back-to-back S-tier placements, and that will be the spicy Funyuns and the original Hot Cheetos. These two are amazing, but the Funyuns in particular are just great. Like, I love original Funyuns. And then you add some spice to it. Man, oh man, it's great. Original Hot Cheetos are self-explanatory. You already know that these are a safe bet if you want something spicy and delicious. I cannot say the same for the Pringles Extra Hot with Chili and Lime. These are not bad at all, but I just don't think spicy Pringles are the move and would rather have a lot of other flavors. But like I said, it isn't bad and definitely is better than the DNC tier stuff. So I think this lands at a solid B for me. Wow, that was not as bad of a rating as I thought. What are your favorite Pringles, Joe? I love me some cheddar Pringles or pizza Pringles and I just much and chew a ton of them till I get that big old glob of chip in my mouth. It's the only right way to eat them in my opinion but not for Takis because those need to be suckled on like a teat. I suck all that powder off that bad boy and make sure that I get a clean tortilla chip by the time I chew it. Then after I'm done with all the chips, I undress the bag and look at its insides and see all this wonderful red dust and like the tips of my fingers as I gracefully move up and down on that bag, getting into every single nook and cranny in order to consume the max amount of chili powder that the bag provides. This has to go into A tier. With the way you were describing it, I thought for sure this was going to go into S tier. Joe, you have the tendency to make everything just sound weird, and I think it makes people uncomfortable. Good. If you aren't uncomfortable, then you're not doing something right with your life. But yeah, rounding off this list, we got our finalists, and that is the Flaming Hot Lays, which I have going into A tier. I like their flavor, but what I enjoy more is the texture of the Lays chip and just the satisfying thin chip. It has a really nice texture when compared to other things on this list and wrapping everything up, we got hot munchies. And if you thought I was going to sit here and praise hot munchies, well, you'd be mistaken. I like the regular munchies, but if I am trying to eat hot chips and I get a fucking pretzel in the middle of it, I'm going to get upset. Still though, it is not that awful and belongs at least in C tier. Well, looking at this list, it's actually pretty solid. Once again, you pull through when it comes to your lists. Thanks, Barack. I really appreciate that compliment. I have been cooking with the lists, and I'd like to think it's because of my new routines that I implemented into my life to help me concentrate and really hunker down on these lists. Let me share all these secrets of the trade with my precious Joe heads. So first, I remove distractions, take regular breaks, put on some focus music or some white noise, plan out the whole day in order to timestamp things, meditate regularly, exercise, and get plenty of electrolytes. All those things will help you all concentrate and maintain better focus in any task you guys have. Oh, and uh, I do take a copious amount of Adderall as well. Wait, what now? What is up, gang? We are back with another presidential tier list. And this time around, we got the great Don rating various delicious looking pastries. And while I told Barack and Joey that I did not know all of the ones on the list, they insisted that I still do this list. 
Come on, Donald, don't sound suspicious about that. Of course, we chose the most elite eater of the three of us for this pastry list. And we just know that you will have good takes on these. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if you just put all of these in S tier. Joe, you absolute Neanderthal. I would never make an uneven list like that. I know your sleepy self would, but I, on the other hand, have standards. Yeah, that's totally what I meant by that comment. But uh, Donald, can you get this list started? Because I am getting hungry just looking at all the stuff here. Jesus, do not tell me what to do, Sleepy Joe. But I will get this wonderfully sweet list started for our fans. Did you guys like what I did there? Well, it doesn't matter because I liked it. But anyways, up first, we got some sort of vanilla pastry with some nice filling. I actually don't know what this is, but just by the looks of it, I can smell it and taste it through the screen. And it actually looks kind of good. My Donalysis provides me with great insight on this and seeing how it has a nice filling with either syrup or fruit. I can tell this is kind of good. I think I will land on B tier for this dish. As a matter of fact, I may as well grade the next two as well because I do not know what they are. But the next one seems to be like some sort of pie dish or sweet casserole or even a brown Betty. Listen, I can't tell you what it is, but I can smell it through the screen and tell you that it belongs in A tier. I see that it's not doing too much and has some nice cinnamon on top. And then you have them in nice little bite-sized pieces. I love that, and that's why it belongs up there. Meanwhile, with this Choco Taco looking thing, I will be putting this into B tier. Don't get the Don wrong, because I do like things when they are wet and sloppy, but that just looks like it is doing a bit too much. Like I take a bite and then white ooze just flows all over my plate and probably falls out of the side of this mysterious cum dish. I think B is a little high, but I am a sucker for pastries. So even though I shit on this, I know that this unknown ass dish will get eating it no matter what. I'm starting to think that we maybe should not have gotten you to do this tier list if you did not know the first three entries. No, trust me, I'm good for the next ones uh, for the most part. Like I most definitely have us for this next dish because this next pastry is most definitely carrot cake. And I do like carrot cake, as you can tell by our cake tier list, but in the grand scheme of things, when you compare something as simple as carrot cake to other things on this list, like tarts and churros, then you already know it isn't in the same stratosphere. I love me some carrot cake with some tea, but I can't for the life of me place this in the higher tiers. It is good for a cake, but not for a pastry, if that makes sense. Still, though, I give it a C tier, so it's not completely being shat on. Me personally, I really like carrot cake no matter what. I think the value of it does not change. If Margot Robbie is pretty in one movie, she won't suddenly stop being pretty in another. Same goes with carrot cake. Carrot cake is in no way comparable to Margot Robbie. It's more like an actress that looks super cute or hot in one film, but then looks absolutely mid in all other film appearances. I will not go further on carrot cake talk, because up next we got some key lime pie. And let me tell you all that this straight up goes into S tier, and there is no argument against it. I love me some good ass key lime pie, and I am just a fan of citrusy desserts. Like I would kill someone for a tray of lemon squares, which by the way, if those were on this list, they would also get an S tier. I would absolutely do horrendous things if I were high and needed lemon squares. Have you guys ever seen a Serbian film? I'd do worse things than that, dude. Joe, never mention that film in my presence ever again. And what do you mean, high? We don't do that type of stuff, remember? Oh, yeah, our monetization, uh, yeah. And by that, I mean high on life, because I never do any sort of substance. Hunter does, though. Yeah, we all know about that twisted and, quite frankly, unhealthy relationship you have with your son, Hunter. But that's not the talk of the list, because holy shit, we have another S tier, and that, of course, are churros. I tell you. I was hesitant on building that wall only because I knew I would be depriving the U.S. country of all these delicious Mexican foods and desserts, and the churro is one of them. It is a fried stick of dough with or without a filling, and then you just tack on a bunch of brown sugar or normal sugar in general. This is like the Michael Jordan of pastries because it is just so damn unhealthy, but like that's what makes it so damn good. We then continue with some form of greatness because after that we got a cinnamon roll and this is a solid A tier. I don't hyper twerk for these things like I won't throw my ass back to high heaven, but I will give you a solid and firm handshake if you bring some cinnamon rolls to the function, which is still respectable in my opinion. You just can't go wrong with a cinnamon roll. I don't know, Donald, cinnamon rolls are all right. Like I would not go as far as to put them into A tier, but whatever. Whatever is right, because last time I checked, it was the Don making this, not you. Following that, we got another unknown ass pastry, but it looks pretty nice with all that powdered sugar on top. Give me a glass of milk and I'll be set with that. 
So I am thinking a B tier for that. And as for our next entry, we got cream puffs, and these are okay. The problem with cream puffs is just that they are too easy to eat. I am just eating air instead of an actual dessert, but I will still be giving this a B tier because despite that complaint, it is still very delicious. I absolutely cannot say the same for the next entry because creme brulee is overrated as hell, and I honestly don't jive with it as much as others. Now, I am not saying that it is bad, but I'm also not saying it's the best thing to ever exist. On this pastry list, it hits mediocrity, much like with the carrot cake, so I think a C tier is good. The hell is creme brulee, really? It's just custard with a caramelized top layer, and that's it. Overrated, as I said. And following that, we got another unknown dessert. It looks like some bread with an orange filling. I think I'll give it a B tier. Whenever I don't know what it is, I want you all to know that I just guess how good it is just by the picture. That won't be the case for this bad boy up next because I got eclairs going straight into S tier. It's basically an elongated donut with some good ass filling. And if you get me a coffee with that, it'll be wraps. Well, wraps for the toilet because I may have the shits for the next 30 minutes, but after that, I'll be set. We really did not need to hear about your bowel movements, Donald. You could have just kept talking about the pastry instead. Speak for yourself, Barry. I, for one, really enjoy it when Donald opens up to us about his tummy issues, and that in turn makes me feel more safe and secure to talk about my tummy issues. Well, the very last thing I want is for you to feel safe and secure, so I think I'll take you up on your advice, Barack. Anyways, after that, we got pies, and this is an immediate A tier, because you can never go wrong with any sort of pie. Me, personally, though, I am a cream pie type of guy, the next pastry is like some powdered donut or something. I swear I've had these before and they bang. I think I'll give it an A tier as well. But now we run into a problem because why the hell do we have the damn peach emoji in this tier list? Yeah, that thing is so curvy. I can actually incorporate this into my material the more I look at it. For the love of God, Joe, don't say that. And I could not tell you what that is, Donald. Sorry. Well, the curvy peach emoji gets a C tier. Looks more like a candy than a pastry. Then after that, we may have a controversial take but I also have macaroons going in C tier as well because they are kind of overrated. Like, I don't hate them. But when the hell am I ever like, man, I'm craving some macaroons? I'll answer that. It is never. Then after that, we got what I presume to be is mochi. Now, the Don is a man of culture, and if this is actually mochi, then I, of course, am giving this an A tier. Now, I prefer ice cream mochi over the dry-ass regular one, but I still enjoy them a lot and have to once again applaud the Japanese for just having good food in general. I don't know how there are not a lot of fat people over there. Probably because they don't deep fry all of their food, but God damn it, it is an American right to enjoy a deep fried Twinkie or some deep fried Oreos. Could have not worded it better myself, Joe. After that, we got some flan, and this is going into A tier right off the bat. Maybe I am just biased, but flan slaps anytime I've had it, and maybe because I've rarely had it, it has been more of a positive experience with me. Following that, we got some weird-ass scrambled egg-looking thing. I swear I remember eating this, but cannot recall the flavor of it, but I'll still give it a C tier. After that, we got another S tier, and that is pumpkin pie. This shit slaps, and because it's seasonal, you don't really get the opportunity to eat it a lot, thus preserving the value of it. I also want to add that if cheesecake were on this list, I would skyrocket that shit to God tier or something above S, because the Don will never not eat a cheesecake. Trust me, we can tell you never skip out on a cheesecake. Just like how you'll never skip out on being an absolute creep. But now coming to the end of the list, we have nothing other than an amazingly delicious tart. Now with that description alone, you should already assume I am placing this high, but I have to tell you all that this is getting an S tier from me. I love tarts so much and just having the sour slash bitter fruit on top with the sugary glaze and the beautifully crafted crust at the bottom. Oh my God. It's amazing just to think about it. Like, my mouth is salivating. Wow, way to describe your love for tarts. But, uh, Donald, I want to point out something wrong with this list. What could possibly be wrong with my list? Sure, I may have not known like a couple, well, uh, actually more like three or four things on this list, but I tried my best with the knowledge I had and did my best to give everything an absolutely fair rating. Like, I am looking this thing over and cannot see a single wrong thing with it. Whoa, whoa, let's settle down a bit and take a deep breath because there is something quite obviously wrong with this list that a lot of other lists don't have wrong. Can you spot it, Donald? It's kind of right there in your face. Barack, stop messing with me because I am looking up and down on this thing more than a girl in a bikini and I see nothing wrong with it. Dude, you forgot to put absolutely anything in D tier. Like, that's such an obvious mistake. 
Oh, that's no mistake. Donald is just a fat bitch. What is going on, gang? We are back with another tier list, and we got a little banger on our hands because this bread tier list will be done by no one other than the Don himself. I am a carb connoisseur, so I feel like I am a great person to judge. Our elite eater once again steps up to the plate as always. That sounds like a joke, but as I always say, I'm simply cultivating mass for my insane cut. When is that supposed to be? I'm looking forward to seeing it. The cut is, to be determined, I still am not satisfied with my mass. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started with this list. And up first, we got one of my absolute favorites, and that is a bagel. You all already know that I have to place this all the way in S tier. Get you some bagels with some cream cheese, and that by itself merits this high rating. Then after that, oh my God, we got ourselves another S tier, and that's Hawaiian rolls. These things are like God's gift to us because these are the perfect buns for any type of sliders, and you can make something as simple as ham and cheese sandwiches or something as avant-garde as burger sliders. Are hamburger sliders really that amazing to your fat ass that you'd call that avant-garde? I'm pretty sure that you're not even using that in the right way. Joe, I am more than positive that I am smarter than you, and I am definitely using this in the right way. Your sleepy self can barely babble a coherent sentence. Your ass sounds like Walter Jr., but sprinkle in a little bit of Tourette's on top of that speech impediment cake. Uh, I hate to break it to you, Donald, but I just looked it up, and it probably was not used correctly by you. The definition goes as follows. New and unusual or experimental ideas, especially in the arts or the people introducing them, or if we use the adjective form favoring or introducing experimental or unusual ideas, which is still actually wrong either way. Yeah, my bad, Donald. It turns out you're not as smart as me. You're actually as smart as a Chinese kid with Down syndrome. Well, that uh, actually seems quite smart if you ask me, but I refuse to sit here and get slandered just because I didn't know what the hell avant-garde means. And I absolutely refuse to get told off by the dude who was talking about ice cream during the New Year's Eve thing on ABC. Hey, man, I was merely giving the Joe heads what they wanted, and as you can tell by the host, he wanted me to talk to him about ice cream. What the hell did you want me to do? Talk about those tunnels in New York? Can we please not bring that up again? I don't want any tunnel talk during this video. Okay, let's instead talk about how I plan on gambling all of our country's money on the Ravens winning the Super Bowl. I cannot wait to pull this country out of its debt and even tripling our money just because I gambled it all. I cannot wait to see them lose to the 49ers or some other team. Frankly, I don't care, but now that you are rooting for them, then I kind of have to hate them. Anyways, let's not get confused and continue with the bread list because we are getting too sidetracked by Joe's tardness. Following these two amazing performances from Hawaiian rolls and bagels, we kind of falter a bit and get onto oatmeal bread, and I will be honest. I don't entirely hate it, and I'm not at all throwing it back for it, but I think I'll place a little respect on it and have it at C tier because there can certainly be worse. Thankful the worst thing has not come yet because we got brioche bread coming up next and this shit is a slapper. Solid A tier for some brioche bread and I'll also be giving whole wheat bread an A tier. This one might be controversial, but I actually don't mind whole wheat. Like it's not as good as white bread, but it also has some nutritional value instead of none when it's compared to white bread. So I'll give it something rather than nothing. Since when did someone as round as my nutsack care about what is nutritious and what is not? Joe, let's be honest here. Your nutsack is no longer round. That shit probably looks like some curtains and can probably stretch more than rubber. But I told you that I am bulking and I do care about what I eat. You just catch me on my cheat days. Anyways, moving on, we got some rye bread. And even though I was giving respect to whole wheat bread, I am afraid that I will give absolutely no respect towards rye bread. This would only serve to wipe my ass with, and even then I feel like it would do a shit job at it. Absolutely awful and belongs in D tier. Now what's the hate for rye bread? I don't think it's that bad. You also seem to think that bombing the innocent lives of children isn't a big deal, so I don't think you have much of a say. Anyways, up next we got white bread, and I actually really like white bread, but to be honest, it isn't a world beater. Like it belongs in a solid A tier because it does enhance a sandwich, but I won't go crazy if I can't get a sandwich with white bread. After that, we got banana bread, and I like this as a little dessert and would give this a solid B tier. Some banana bread slaps with some tea or coffee. Ooh, and then we got some sweet, sweet cornbread, and you all know that Don loves him some cornbread, and I think that has to go in A tier. Solid selections here, but I think I may enjoy banana bread more than cornbread. I feel like you can't compare the two, Joe, but amazingly, I won't actually hold you on that opinion. It's not like you said you liked rye bread. Following that, we got whole grain bread and cinnamon bread. 
which I have both coincidentally going into B tier. I am not a hater of whole grain bread, and if you toast it, it becomes better in my opinion, and the same applies for the cinnamon bread. However, I cannot say the same for our next two entries, because I have croissants going into A tier, and then I have biscuits going into S tier. Just seeing that image of a croissant makes me crave a chocolate one. Of course, your fat ass wants a chocolate one first before anything else. Okay, to be fair, Joe, chocolate croissants slap so hard. The first thing Barack has said that did not make my ears bleed. But yeah, any type of croissant slaps. After that, we got two types of butter bread, which both go into B tier, in my opinion. Don't have much to say on that, but I do have something to say about English muffins, and that is that they are mid as hell. They belong in C tier because it isn't that good. Like, I would rather have all things above it than an English muffin. And maybe that's just how American I am. But I can't have no English muffin for breakfast. Some cinnamon raisin bread, though. Now, that's a different story because this is pretty all right. I think it also belongs in B tier alongside normal cinnamon bread because I think the raisin doesn't enhance, nor does it make it worse. It's more of a preference thing. I personally prefer raisins. I am a huge fan of raisins, and I especially love raisin brand cereal. My only problem is when there aren't enough raisins. I hate it when they try to skimp out on that. Joe, I just want you to know that it makes complete sense that an old fart like you enjoys raisins, and I'm sure no one is surprised to hear that about you. After that, we got two back-to-back A-tier entries, and that is both flatbread and flour tortillas. I don't know why flour tortillas are here considering this is a bread tier list, but uh, either way, it gets ranked. These two are very nice, and I quite enjoy them. But if you ask the Don what he really loves, then I will tell you straight up that it is this trilogy we got coming up next because sourdough bread, garlic bread, and lastly, some French bread. All three of these are God's gifts bestowed upon us lowly humans, and I know everyone is going to get on me for shitting on English muffins, but now here I am praising French bread, and all I have to say regarding that is that the French know how to make some damn good bread. I don't think anyone is going to say anything against a pretty solid take like this. Your ass just said a very popular opinion. That's like me going, hey, everyone stealing is bad. I'm sorry if that offends anyone. Stealing is only bad if you get caught, unless you're a scaredy cat. Barack, you're spitting a whole lot of nonsense today, especially if you make it seem like Joe is cool. I am sure there are some sourdough haters watching, or maybe even someone who's allergic to garlic, and they can't ever have garlic bread. Either way, I don't care. And Joe, all I have to say regarding your comment is, nice. That's about it. Okay, continuing on with the list, we got pita bread and breadsticks both going into A tier. I feel like no one has complaints with this. Feels like a good place to have them. Yuck, and up next, call me a damn hater. But you cannot expect the Don to like pumpernickel bread and even some zucchini bread. Like if your ass came to this list with the mindset of man, I sure hope the great and magnificent Donald puts pumpernickel and zucchini bread into S tier. Then let me crush your hopes and dreams right here and right now. I am placing these both into C tier, but in reality, they're hanging on by a damn thread because if I didn't hate rye bread so much, they would be there with that disgusting thing. Okay, the hate for rye bread is kind of out of pocket at this point. You cannot sit there with a straight face and try to convince me that you enjoy pumpernickel and zucchini bread more than rye bread. I don't even understand why you two are hating on zucchini bread that much when it's actually pretty decent. And, uh, uh... Donald, you do realize that pumpernickel is basically the same as rye bread. Wait, what? Yes, pumpernickel is a typically dense, slightly sweet rye bread, traditionally made with sourdough starter and coarsely ground rye. So in essence, you're still eating rye bread. Nah, man, you said it is made with sourdough starter, so that has to be what makes it better. I refuse to listen to your facts and logic and will instead proceed with this list. Fuck off, Joe. I am demoting your ass and now you are no longer cool. Up next, we got our last S tier, and that, of course, is naan bread. Now, I love me some naan bread with almost anything. The more butter on it, the better. Actually, I do have to say that I require some naan if I am eating chicken tikka masala or some curry. Like, if I don't have it, then I feel like I'm eating it incorrectly, and it just doesn't feel right. Okay, that is kind of a solid take, unlike your pumpernickel take. Joe, stop pointing that shit out. Just let it die out so no one thinks about it. Anyways, after that, we got pretzel buns and potato bread going into A tier. Both are pretty solid for selections, and I personally quite enjoy them. Get me a nice pretzel bun on a burger or some potato bread for my hot dog, and I will be set. And since I am on the last one, I may as well grate it, and our last thing is yeast bread, and I don't know what the fuck that means. I assume it's just normal, everyday bread, and I will be giving it a C tier. It needs more flashiness. 
Does the bread need more flashiness? Like, what the hell does that even mean? I don't know about the bread, but old Joe here knows a thing or two about flashing. I can show everyone right now if you want. Okay, that's enough.